Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. My name is Michael McKeever, and I will be your host for this episode, which we've entitled, It's Magic. Now, joining me today is our usual panel of experts, the always wonderful, the very talented Iris Acker, producer, director, actress, and a very dear friend. Sitting next to her is one of the region's top uh, journalists and critics, Mr. William Hirschman. Uh, next to me is the always wonderful, the very beautiful, and award-winning actress, Karen Stevens. But it gives me great, great pleasure to introduce our very special guest. His name is Gary Goodman. He is a magician, an illusionist, a mind reader, a voiceover actor, and an actor. And he is our, what do I put it? How do I put this? He is our centerpiece for Thank today's you. episode, which Thank is going to all be about all magic. Right. I like that. So. Yes. Gary, let's get right into it. How did you start uh, on this path to become a magician? Well, I uh, was about eight years old, and I saw this magician standing on a stage. In fact, let me show you what he did, if I can remember. He was standing on a stage, and he counted one, two, three, four, five, six cards. And then I saw him toss away one, two, three. But when he counted them again, he had one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> Six cards. <laughs> and I was amazed. I was astounded, much like you people. <laughs> and I, I went backstage. And as you know, you're never supposed to go backstage. But I'm eight years old. I go backstage. I see the magician. He's very tall. But then again, I'm eight years old. And I look up at him and I said, Mr. Magician, could you please show me the one where you counted one, two, three, four, five, six cards. I then saw you toss away one, two, three. But when you counted them again, you had one, two, three, four, five, six cards. And he actually looked at me and he said, son, are you talking about the one where I counted one, two, three, four, five, six cards. I then tossed away one, two, three. But when I counted them again, I had one, two, three, four, five, six cards. I said, yes, that's the one. And he looked at me and he said, can you keep a secret? And I said, yes. And he said, so can I. <laughs> so honestly, I'm hoping one day that I can come back on this show, Spotlight on the Arts, yes? I'm not promising, I'm hoping that I'll learn the one where the magician counts one, two, three, four, five, six cards, tosses away one, two, three, but when he counts them again, he has one, two, three, four, five, six cards. That's the one I want to learn. We'll see. Only come back if you teach us. <laughs> well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't want to do the show. I just want to watch more magic. Right. That's <laughs> kind of what I want to do for today. Me too. Um, yeah. So, yes. on, we're on the subject of keeping a secret. Yes. You, you, we, we're going to backtrack and you know right. pick up all the other stuff. But right. you wrote a book on yes. magic. Oh. Are you worried about giving away your secrets? No, because I feel if someone's going to pay for the book, buy the book then they're going to keep the secrets. They must, have, <laughs> they must be sincere, that. right? Oh. They must have a deep interest in learning the magic. Okay. Well, how, right. how does this, how did you learn your, is it like something that, that's handed down from magician to magician, or do you simply learn from a book? Is there a school for, for magic? When I was learning magic, there really wasn't a school at the time that I knew of, but um, I learned from books, the library, that was the wow. magic place, and then I started performing for the neighborhood, I actually, you know, did a show in my neighborhood. True story, charged 10 cents a ticket. Kids <laughs> came it. into the garage, and I, the true story, I locked the garage door, and I did two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody left. And when I, when, when I finished, and I looked at how much I made, I think I made about $3 that day, I said, wow, this is amazing. I made $3 <laughs> doing these tricks. And then I just wanted to uh, be a magician. I, I, I found that being a magician gave me uh, an opportunity to be on stage because really I, I enjoy acting. And I didn't know how to you know, get on TV or in the movies or be an actor, but I knew that if I could do a magic show, I could, I could be on a stage and be an actor, more or less. Well, well and, tell you what, yeah. on that note, because we want to yes. you, uh, talk to you about being an actor yes. as well, but um, uh, I've been told that you um, had a, a special role in the film Jack and Jill, where you played, of all things, a, ma <laughs> a magician. So there it is, working both these skills. We're going to take a quick look oh. at um, a clip from really? the film, and okay. then we'll talk to you about being an actor. Oh, thank you. All, all right. right. 
Okay, so what do I do? All you do, Jill, is just come up the stairs, sit inside the box, and we'll do the magic. Okay. All right, Wish thank you so much. Guys. Great job. Thank you so much. And all the we way. Can just get you in here. Oh, oh my God. Watch very closely. What are you doing? Tell me what you're going to yeah. do. Ah, you got me. And. What's happening? Now. What's happening? Oh. <laughs> What's going on? What? Man, no, you have to settle down. You have to settle down. Why do I like this? Yeah, wait a minute. Well, don't settle lose down. My just shoes. just don't come lose back together, Belle. Belle, 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 please help me. Belle, please, 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 please help, help me. Back I really again. need I your help. I'm really, yeah, really, 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 really got to calm down. Yeah, you really have to calm down. You know that. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm doing it as fast as I can, lady. Just take it easy here. Look, lady, just come on. What are you playing? Here, let me take your hand. I don't want you to touch me, please. You're a sick person. No, no. You are a sick person. You need help. Just get away from me. I don't just believe this. Can you believe this? That <laughs> truck is the one that I, whenever I see it, I want. I really want to know how it's. I mean, it's she's a, a big lady that to squeeze into right. that half right. a box. It's got that was yeah. Part of the magic is to get Adam Sandler in that box. <laughs> yeah. So one yes. of the questions I'm always interested uh -huh. in is the interrelationship between doing magic and theater and magic as a performing art where you're doing comedy, right. you have lines. Yes. Talk about a little bit about the intersection of theater or the performing arts with stage sure. magic. Sure. Well, um, you know, to really create a, a really fun magic illusion, you have to consider the music, uh, the costuming, you know, the choreography of the illusion and what you're going to say. And then all that comes together and it makes it a, an entertainment piece or a theatrical piece. So it's scripted. It's scripted, absolutely. Um, and often when I'm telling people, when people are calling me and saying, can you do a show for this company or can you do a show for my private party, I always mention that my shows are very theatrical. I'm not just there to do trick. a trick, 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 trick. I have music in the background. And, and all my music is, uh, you know, I, I select it to, to match the, the effect that I'm doing. And then I consider what I'm wearing, and I consider Good what I'm you. going to say, and, uh, and add some humor, and, uh, and then it all comes together and makes it, I feel, more theatrical. Do you have a magic trick that no other magician has? Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> this was not prepared. No, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, I, brought this, I brought this paper bag, and I thought, you know, let me just do something with everyday objects. And often in my show, I like to work with everyday objects, because I think it makes it even more magical. So um, a paper bag, and even more importantly, the contents, all right, contents, bottle of ketchup. <laughs> now, if you're home watching this, I want everybody to say, ooh, ah, <laughs> right? ooh, ah. Oh, thank you. I can actually hear them. All right. I'm going to make the bottle vanish from the bag simply by waving my hand over the bag. Counting to three, the bottle will disappear. Watch. One, two, three, and the bottle. Let me do this again. <laughs> this again. Paper bag. I'm not used to doing this seated with the hot lights and, you know, and people this close to me. Let me try it one more time. All right, uh, paper bag, bottle of ketchup, take two, everybody say ooh, ooh ah. ah. I'll make it disappear on the count of three. One, two, three, and the bottle, ah, is gone. Wow. <laughs> now I can tell right away, this gentleman here is saying, I know how he did it, it's a trick. <laughs> well, making the bottle vanish may be easy, but the tough part is bringing it back. You know, if you're, <laughs> if you're gonna watch that closely, forget the whole thing, all right? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm, you know, so close. Very wow. impressive. Wow. Well, thank you, thank so you. So you are unique. Well, Iris, as... I tell everybody, any eight-year-old with 40 years experience can do this. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first professional gig when you were Charge 10 cents? And they say when you I, get paid, thank you're you. a pro. Right. <laughs> That's right. I was uh, 12 years old. 12. And, uh, and I've been in Boca Raton for 35 years doing uh, magic. I grew up in Niagara Falls, New York. I spent eight years up there doing magic all through school, all through college. I went to FAU, but I continued doing the magic. And then when I got out of college, I, I just continued doing it. Was uh, that your shows. goal when you got out of, of school, saying, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be a magician? Or That was my goal, but that was not my family. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that happen? So, so, so few people are able right. to actually live their dreams. How did that come about? That's really the, the greatest trick. Absolutely. Right? Um, I did try other things. You know, I, I, I went back to FAU and I took law courses 
And then I was in the law library, and, this, and I just realized the, the people are so serious as lawyers. <laughs> and I'm trying to once in a while, you know, do some magic for the, the law students, and they're not in, into it at all. So I said, well, you know, this, I don't feel comfortable. So then someone said, be a teacher, and I took courses in, you know, being a teacher. But then I, I just kept missing, you know, the feeling of being on stage and doing the shows. And I thought, this is not my passion. And so I just went for it, and I thought, if I... If I'm able to do any show, and, and as a magician, if you can do close-up magic, that's where often people call me to, to do a cocktail party, or I even have companies that want me to mingle for four hours at, at a party, just doing cards and coins and oh, ropes like and all that. that. Yeah, the sure. close-up magic. You've seen me at private yes, parties, I, I know. I like that. And uh, I said, okay, then I can do that. If I can get on a stage, I can do those shows. I can be in someone's living room and do a show. I've even done shows for people. There's been two people in the audience at a, at a, at a living room. <laughs> um, no, some people, you know, that they want that, so I'm there. What? And then the big grand illusions. The grand illusions, you know, making the people float in the air and being able to make Adam Sandler, you know, saw Adam yes, Sandler. Yes, yes. That's enabled me to get more into the big time, to be in front of larger audiences. I've done the Miami Heat halftime for eight seasons, 20,000 people around wow. me doing illusions. I would have never gotten, actually Adam Sandler um, auditioned 75 magicians for that role. And here, this is a true story. He, um, I, I didn't get the role initially. And I kept calling because I really wanted to do it. I thought this is probably going to be my only opportunity to be in a movie. <laughs> and I really wanted to do it. So I kept calling the casting director. And I kept saying, have you made a decision? And she kept saying, not yet. One night I called. She said, I'm sorry. Oh. We've made a decision. You're not the one we chose, 75 magicians. And then as I was about to hang up, I said, is there anything else I can do in the movie? Because I really wanted to be in the movie. And she said, well, oh, wait a minute. Adam wants you to send a picture right now of you, send a picture. So apparently Adam's in the room. I, my wife, my wife Jamie takes a picture of me in our living room, instantly, thank God for email, right? Send it, boom. Within a couple hours, you get a phone call, Adam wants you. Wow. wow. And that's how I actually got on the movie set. Four days I was on the movie set on the Allure of the Seas uh, ship. Uh, it was the fourth day we, we filmed it. And it almost didn't happen because the floor, they do an ice skating show and they yes. couldn't get the floor to retract to put the regular floor. <laughs> and they, about an hour, two hours, they had technicians coming, they couldn't get the floor, and Adam's about to say, just forget the whole scene. Oh, and I'm sitting oh. there going, oh, I don't believe this. And then finally the floor worked and the other floor came in. <laughs> and he was a pleasure to work with, by the way. There you go. A Glad really you know nice that. man. Do, yeah. you, you, do you have an agent? or a business manager or someone who tans that end of it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering. I didn't know. I've never found anybody. So if really? anybody's out there and... So how do you market? How do you well, get gigs? Uh, my wife is really great at marketing. Mm -hmm. So she um, often sends newsletters out to past clients. That really helps. Um, word of mouth, the mm -hmm. referrals. 75% of my business is people just calling me and saying, we used you for this party, now we want to use you for this party or my friend it. recommended you, and the other 25% is the internet. Mm -hmm. But there are agents and party planners that do know of me, and they do call right. as well. Well, let's, yeah. let's see if we could help in, in any way. Yeah. If, if anyone's watching oh, right now and would like you. to know how to get a hold of you, <laughs> how would they do really? it? Do you have a website? Yes. Well, what is that website? It's, what would uh, it be? It's <laughs> www.garygoodman.com. That's easy Garygoodman.com. With one R, G-A-R-Y. Thank you. G-A-R-Y-G-O-O-D-M-A-N. Dot com. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. thank you. Well, let's, let's have another magic trick. Another maybe. magic. All right, something that's visual. You know, when, when you're on television like this, I like yes. to do things that are more visual and quick. Um, so this is, this is a classic, actually. I learned this uh, from another magician. You know, often that's how I do learn some of the magic. I was going to ask trade about secrets. that. Yeah. We trade secrets. And I was really, this is a true story, I was about probably 13, 14 years old. Wow. And this magician by the name of Gene Gordon, the magicians who, who would know that name, he founded the International Brotherhood of Magicians, which is an organization that's still alive today. And uh, he showed me this. He says, you take three unequal pieces of rope, you, you drop them over your hand like this, and that's how you turn them into three equal pieces of rope. Now, if you had been drinking, this would have been a great trick. But, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently you're not. So, so look, we <laughs> take the short piece of rope, we bring it over like so, Where's the medium piece? All right, there it is. And now the very long, the question remains, how can you have three even equal lengths of rope if the middles aren't equal? I say the magic words, spotlight on the arts. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I say that because I want to be invited back. Right? So those are the magic words. And watch, just like that, 
three even equal lengths of rope. Wow. And thank you, and you can even count them. You see, that's what, your eyes never blink. No. I just noticed that, look at that. And there's two, and this makes three. Now, a lot of times when I do this, people say, whatever happened to the short piece? Whatever happened to the medium? Whatever happened to the long? And you know what? They never left your sight. There's the oh, short, wow. there's the medium, there's the long. Many people say, how does he do it? Others say, why? <laughs> just, I'll keep doing it. I'm Those, having uh, the people best keep calling time. Me. <laughs> so, I've never been so close to a magician, and I figure, you know, we were going to be able to yeah. see. Let's have a but... party, and we'll invite Gary. There you go. Yeah, okay. That's what I want to hear. Maybe we'll More have people a having party. parties, right? <laughs> meeting me at That's the party. wonderful. Has there been a particular um, trick or illusion that you found challenging? Or, um, and is there one that you would like to do that you haven't mastered yet? Well, um, I've fortunately mastered a lot of grand illusions, and uh, the one that I find um, most challenging is the Harry Houdini trunk escape. Mm -hmm. oh. And I mentioned earlier that I grew up in Niagara Falls. Right, right across the bridge in Canada was the Niagara Falls, uh, uh, Ontario, Harry Houdini Magical Museum. And I used to go there so many times as a kid. This true story, the curator of the museum gave me a, a, a lifetime pass. Aww. He says, you've, you've come here way too many times. You keep paying and paying and paying. And I would study Houdini's magic in the museum. And he had this trunk. And I kept watching the, the, the old uh, uh, TV clips. They, they're actually filmed some uh, Houdini things. And uh, he would get locked in the trunk. And this is what I've done in my show for years. I get locked in the trunk. Um, and my lady assistant stands on top of the trunk with a curtain. She says, one, two, three, she drops the curtain. I'm standing there. Right. She's in the locked trunk, yes. tied up in a bag with the handcuffs on in a different costume. That's the most challenging illusion. But you do it? I do it. I Whoa. can't believe I'm still doing that one. <laughs> I do it. Yeah. Wow. And, and then there's been others, you know, where the lady gets, I have this one where the lady gets in a cabinet, and I, it's a cabinet about half her size, and uh, a big blade goes right through the cabinet. So she's sawed in half vertically. But then, uh, but then these giant geometric metal tubes I push right through the cabinet. So one goes through the top, one goes through the bottom. So now the audience is saying, wait, now I'm looking through the entire cabinet and we don't see her. And then it gets zigzagged. Half of her body gets moved up to one side of the table, the other half's on the other, and then her hand waves to everybody. Yeah, That's that the too. one that got me the Miami Heat job that they used at the Miami mm -hmm. Heat Arena for oh. halftime because it's so incredible. And Chris Everett, I've done her charity event for 15 years, and wow. she's, she's even come out on the court and looked in the, you know, <laughs> right while I'm doing it. She couldn't take it. She came right, I have a picture of her doing it. She's like, what's going on here? You know? How do you gauge your yeah. different shows? I mean, you have these grand illusion shows. Yes. You have smaller, more intimate shows. Do you have a, um, a, a bunch of different packages that you put together? Do, do your shows evolve over the years? How, how does it work? How do you well, put your shows together? because I've been doing this forever, I'm able to design the show accordingly. So if somebody says, look, we don't have much space you know, I can do a show in a, the smallest of spaces. I just did a company uh, a corporate thing in, in uh, Tampa the other day, and there were 300 people in the ballroom, and th they were all able to see the show because I designed it for, you know, 300 yeah, people. Very clever. And again, you have to have the right sound system, and you have to have the, 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 bigger, the bigger effects, not the things I'm doing here, but much it's larger much effects larger. that play to a large audience. You know, and then, Gary of course, reminded me yes. that he was on my show 20 years yes. ago. 20 years <laughs> yeah. ago. Wow. When it was on stage with yes. Ira Sacker, I, I don't know. Right. I think it was only 12. Tw there is a 12. Was saying, <laughs> 12 years old. But no, I was saying 20 it's an years. It's <laughs> And I say, but he says, no, I, I kept saying, well, I want to be back on, on stage with that. It took 20 yes. years. 20 years, yeah. What's but wrong we with did that? it. We did. How, I just want to say, 20 years ago and now, but let's the, talk about the difference. But we I haven't changed, right? We still look neither the same. Neither one of us. Right. See, yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. another Absolutely great illusion. Question. There you go. But yes, tell me from 20 yes. years ago and now, what yes. is the difference? What is the difference? I mean, you weren't doing all these tricks 20 years I ago. I actually was. <gasps> yes. Really? You just didn't ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Does, has technology, yes. really? has technology yes. affected what you do, either in the ease of what you do or making it more difficult in the sense that 12-year-olds go, well, I saw that uh, in CGI the great, other day. Yeah, great question. Unfortunately, I don't hear that. I don't hear any, and I perform for children as young as four years old and older. So if somebody calls me for a child's, again, design the show for that age, a teenager, those are the toughest of audiences. Course. But believe it or not, the teenagers love the close-up magic. I've performed uh -huh. at universities, and the kids scream. I get the biggest reactions when I'm at like Florida Atlantic University or Mi University of Miami. Huge reactions, they go wild. Um, and then of course I have you know the shows for adults, 
Um, and, they, and, it's, and I get calls for people that, like in, in uh, the, the country clubs, and they feel, well, you know, our audiences are 60 to 80. Will they appreciate it? Yes, absolutely. Magic's an international language, sure. so everybody mm -hmm. really sure. enjoys it. It's just the way it's presented. It's the man or the woman behind the magic, right? And That's then it's live. You can't, it's live. It, you can't, I mean, you watch David Copperfield, and you David go, who? Yeah, <laughs> uh, the, the Charles Dickens character. Oh, yeah. okay. You watch Charles Dickens, yes. David Copperfield, okay. and you sit there and you go, "All right, we know that he swears up and down. Right. That there's no trick. You know, there's no special yeah. effects. Yes. But I can see that a cynical world would go, "Oh, really? We, there's been a split here." Or well, something. here's the. But you, there's oh. no way that anybody can be faking. You can't be faking. No, because I'm always performing live. Uh, except for this thing. Except for this. But, but the cool thing about David Copperfield, and I've said this to many people, is for years and years and years he toured all the biggest arenas and the beautiful theaters for a year. He's a very smart man. Two shows a night, all year long, and then the last week of that year he brings in the TV film crew and they film the shows. So what you saw live, because I went every year, was the same thing you saw on television. Uh -huh. So the, I knew, no trick photography. That is talent. Right. Because some of the others sometimes do play with the Does cameras. Does he do one-on-ones like you do with parties too? Uh, sometimes he'll do a little close-up magic and the camera will come in and he has the big screen so you can all watch. What do uh, you do? What do you do at parties? Um, well, uh, do you have one you could do here? W one of my favorites is this. Um, and tell me again, what is your name? Karen. Excellent memory. <laughs> <laughs> so let me do this with Karen since she's so close to me. Imaginary cards, Karen. All right, so I'm gonna mix, actually you take them, and, and you just mix them up a little bit. But Karen, it's easier if you take them out of the box first. Oh. Yeah, give me the box, all right, thank you. Okay. The box goes back in the pocket. All right, now I'll take the cards. Karen, you're very good. All right, I'll take the cards. Now look, I mix them up. Now, please pick a card, and I'm serious. You took two, put one back. Oh. That's right. Now look at your card, I'm, I'm really serious. Think of the card in your mind. Are you thinking of a card? Mm -hmm. Ace of spades. No, no, I was just saying Ace of Spades. <laughs> Don't pay any attention 51 to me, Karen. 51 more chance. No, <laughs> Karen, did you pick an Ace? No. Good, because I don't want somebody watching this show thinking everybody picks an Ace. Did you pick a Joker? No. Good, because there are no Jokers in this deck. <laughs> that was a test, she's being honest. You see, you really are thinking of the card. Mm -hmm. and you have to have the, the, the suit as well. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Mm -hmm. You have the whole card in your mind. Mm -hmm. Show the card to the TV audience. I won't even look. I've seen this before. <laughs> Go ahead. Show the card. All right, good. Do you feel silly doing this? No. Oh. She's not you ought to try doing it for a living. Right. She's not Put it face down. I won't look. Face down, right here. All right, in my, in my back pocket, I hope I remembered. Yes, the box. <laughs> Cards go in the box. No more pretend. It's reality time. This is the big moment. Before I came to Spotlight on the Arts, <laughs> I turned one card over in this box. Karen, when I count to three, I want you to name, by the way, we should stop right now. I have never met you before. In fact, you came in, we were already seated. I think she was the last one to That's take right. a seat before the cameras turned on. Be honest, have you ever met me before? No. You don't have to seem so happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> We've never met or talked before. When I count to three, I want you to name the card you're thinking, and if this works, it'll be the only card turned over in the box. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Watch this. One, two, three, what's your card? Queen of Hearts. No, it isn't. <laughs> you're not even close. <laughs> Did you really think of the Queen of Hearts? Yes. And there's only one thing left for me to say. Could I have my check now, please? <laughs> <laughs> she says, Queen of Hearts. Now, that's really, really interesting. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this very slowly, very slowly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up the box. For, notice I'm doing this very slowly, right? Mm. And you said Queen of Hearts, yes? All right, I'm doing this very slowly. I'm going to go through the cards, and I want you to notice, I want you to notice something really interesting. Are you, are you watching me closely? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. I, I thought before the show that I, I turned one card over oh, uh -huh. in the deck. Uh -huh. Next to the Ace of Spades, by the way, uh -huh. the card that I <laughs> said a moment ago. That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Are we talking magic if the one card turned over matches the card you just thought of? Ooh. The Queen <laughs> of Hearts. There I go. I'm impressed. <laughs> Finally. I'm impressed. All right. <laughs> so you're the one. Yeah. Okay. I'm the one. It took a whole 30 minute show to finally <laughs> impress this guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Wow. Thank That's you. That's amazing. I, I, yeah. Speaking of lovely assistants, yes. I, I, do you work with assistants on I a regular do. basis? I do. And they're, they're very, lovely. Yes, thank you. That's a prerequisite yeah. to being an assistant. Do, do you but, have uh, a regular um, person who assists you? You know, during my the wife, shows? Jamie, 
uh, when we first got married for seven years. She's never been in the business. She was a natural, and she did all the shows with me. Prior to that, even as a, as a, a teenager, my, the girl next door, <laughs> literally the girl next door was my assistant. She actually turned out to be a famous uh, model at, later on in life, but she, uh, she was my assistant, and then, all through college, you know, I would find different girls, mostly girls that are in theater already, love to, you know, yeah. get on stage and be the magician's assistant. My wife trained two girls from FAU. They were 19. They're both in their 30s. They're married. They have children. And they're still doing the show with me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Terrific. Yeah, so wow. that's Terrific. great. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. That's Leo Thank you. Yes. yes. How do, do they know your tricks? Do they, because On they're... a need-to-know basis. <laughs> right. Yes. Truthfully. Right. Just want to keep the, got to keep the secrets. Mm -hmm. Must keep the secret. If you're getting in the box, you got to know the secret. Not entirely, the whole secret. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had CEOs call me up and they want to magically appear for the the big entrance to the the corporate gathering. And I show them. I say, just stand here. We'll do all the choreography. We spin the box. We clap our hands. We snap the finger. And boom, they appear. And after the the, the show, they'll come up to me and say, "How did I? <laughs> how did I suddenly appear?" I, they really don't know. They watch the, the film and they they they're amazed too I because I don't it. say, "Here's the secret. Here's how come it works." We just do it. What's so wonderful is you're having such a good time. I am, and I'm having oh, a great time on this show. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I don't want the show to end. Can we have one for the road? One yes. more quick one for a the road. A quick one. All right. Yeah. All right. Really quick. I'll do it with you. Excellent. Picture yourself in a grocery store. Okay. All right. Now picture you're, you have a good imagination. I know this. Go. Picture yourself going down an aisle. All right. You're going down an aisle. Yes. Picture yourself reaching up on that aisle and grabbing an object, and you're holding that object in your mind. Done. I made a prediction before the show. You're not going to believe this, and we have not prearranged anything. Um, when I count to three, I want you to name that object and the cost. And the cost. Are you ready? One, two, three. What's the object? Jiffy peanut butter, two twenty-nine. You're not going to believe this. Jiffy peanut butter, two dollars and twenty-nine cents. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Thank you very much. You are yes. amazing, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Appreciate that. Uh, right. I don't know about everyone else and the audience, but I have had a blast. This has been one of, one of the most fun shows that we've oh, had. Thank you. Just, thank it's you. just been terrific. All right. Thank you so much thank for, you. for joining us today. Thank um, you. Uh, Gary Goodman, check yes. him out um, online. I want to thank our panelists. As always, it's been a pleasure to, um, to play with you guys for uh, a half an hour. <laughs> Uh, speaking of going online, if you want to know what's going on in South Florida theater, just check out floridatheateronstage.com. Anything you want to know about what's going on on stage in South Florida theater is at that website. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had fun. And this is Michael McKeever saying, I'll see you next time.